In order to ensure video retains the highest quality possible when deinterlacing, you first need to consider your source video. That means both the video file you're using as a source and the origin of the video in that file. To begin with, you need to understand what interlaced video is. Interlacing is a way of dividing a display in half, with each half comprising every other horizontal line. Each half of the screen, or field, is a separate picture which has half the vertical resolution of the full frame. Fields are displayed one after another. A field consisting of every other horizontal line is drawn in its entirety before the alternating lines are drawn. Progressive video, on the other hand, consists of pictures which fill an entire video frame. Every line is drawn on the screen in a single pass. Deinterlacing transforms interlaced video into progressive video. There are many methods of deinterlacing, and ultimately deciding which one is best for your source requires some work on your part. Although many programs attempt to make these decisions for you, none is as reliable as using your own eyes and judgment. The first thing to consider is whether your interlaced source was originally progressive or interlaced. Film is always progressive. Analog video, which is designed for display on interlaced televisions, is always interlaced. Digital video may originate as either interlaced or progressive. When deinterlacing, your primary goal should be to ensure the final product looks as similar to the source as possible. In some cases, you can even make it look more like the original than it does in your source file. If your interlaced video is from a progressive source, you also need to know how it became interlaced. Methods of converting from progressive to interlaced range from just telling the video decoder to deliver one field at a time, to repeating fields so both interlacing and frame rate properties are affected. This all sounds very complicated, but in reality you can divide videos into a few common groups. The first is 100% interlaced video. That's video which has always been interlaced, which we'll call true interlaced video. It could have been shot by an analog video camera or an interlaced digital video camera. There are basically three ways true interlaced video can be handled. The simplest is to combine the two fields in each frame. Because objects may be in different positions in each field, and in fact they may contain completely different objects, Combining fields will usually produce some sort of artifacts. Artifacts are basically errors in the picture. Artifacts created by standard deinterlacing include blurring in areas where objects are moving and jagged lines called combing artifacts where the edges of objects don't line up perfectly in both fields. Better deinterlacing tools can reduce these artifacts with a variety of advanced techniques we won't cover here for the sake of simplicity. There are other options for deinterlacing, including bobbing and discarding every other field. However, they aren't supported by handbrakes, so we don't need to talk about them. Although content from film sources can simply be stored as progressive frames and then displayed as fields, effectively making it interlaced, it may also need to play at a different frame rate. The standard frame rate for film is 24 frames per second but the frame rate of NTSC video and many of its digital derivatives is approximately 30 frames per second. The substantial difference between 24 frames per second and 30 frames per second can be addressed by a process called telesign. Telesign involves first separating each film frame into fields and then duplicating one field out of four. Over the course of a second, this creates an additional six frames, making up the difference between 24 frames per second and 30 frames per second. In reality, the frame rates we use are generally 23.976 frames per second and 29.97 frames per second, but the math works out the same, so we'll use round numbers to keep things simple. What's most important to understand is that if you have a video from a film source, but which runs at the higher frame rate of approximately 30 frames per second, it will almost always have these duplicate fields, which you can remove to restore the original 24 frame per second content. But before you do that, you'll also need to know how those extra fields were created. The first possibility is actual telesign. This means the extra fields were created before digital encoding occurred and the video is actually interlaced. This process can be reversed by performing an inverse telesign or IVTC operation. IVTC consists of two steps, field matching and decimation. 
Field matching is simply the process of matching top and bottom fields to recreate the original film frames. This may result in some combing artifacts, similar to what you get from combining fields in a true interlaced frame. But field matching doesn't remove all the duplicate information. Instead, it results in the creation of one extra frame for every four original frames. That's where the second part of the IVTC process, decimation, comes in. The extra frames are removed, leaving just the original film frames running at the original film frame rate. In digital video, there's an alternative to TeleSign which accomplishes the same thing without actually making any changes to the encoded video. 2 to 3 pull down, sometimes referred to as 3 to 2 pull down, is used when the original film frames were properly encoded as progressive frames. Pull down simply refers to instructions added to the video telling the decoder to produce interlaced frames matching a telesign pattern. This is sometimes referred to as soft telesign, with actual telesign called hard telesign. Since video telesigned through the use of pull down flags isn't actually encoded interlaced, but merely played back that way, no IVTC is required. Instead, the pull-down flags can be ignored and the original progressive frames stored in your video file can be used for encoding. In fact, this is what Handbrake does by default. In rare cases, interlaced video may originate from a progressive source with a frame rate other than 24 frames per second. The source frame rate is typically either 25 frames per second or one of several lower frame rates used for silent movies or the 8mm film used in home movie cameras. As with 24 frame per second film sources, duplicate fields can be used when converting them to 30 frames per second. Likewise, the methods for recovering the original progressive frames are the same as for 24 frame per second film, although the specifics will vary depending on the pattern of duplicate fields. Interlaced video can also be created from a combination of true interlaced video and film. For 30 frame per second video, this means either telesigning or using pull down flags on the film portions. Sometimes the true interlaced portions are only small clips added to the beginning and or end of the film. In these cases you can treat it as 100% film. But if the true interlaced video portion is more significant, different methods are required which utilize both deinterlacing and recovering the original film frames. The optimal solution is to deinterlace the true interlaced video portions and either IVTC or ignore pull down flags from the film portions. Variable frame rate or VFR encoding can then be used to ensure everything plays at the correct speed. Unfortunately, not every application supports VFR video, so it's not viable for every circumstance. Assuming variable frame rate output isn't an option, you have two alternatives. The preferred method is to deinterlace the true interlaced portions and perform just the field matching step of IVTC on the film portions. This will result in duplicate frames, but also maintain a frame rate of 30 frames per second from beginning to end. If the film portions of your source video file are soft telesigned using pull down flags, the duplicate frames will need to be created to keep the frame rate consistent. Duplicating frames to maintain a constant frame rate introduces another type of artifact called jutter. Jutter occurs when motion is interrupted by a duplicate frame or field. It's also present in film content with either hard or soft telesign, but typically stands out more after field matching. When the film content is hard telesigned, a third approach is possible. The entire video can be treated as true interlaced video and deinterlaced by combining fields. This approach produces lower quality than processing the true interlaced and film portions separately. The more film content is in your video, the worse the overall quality will be. This method should be avoided whenever possible. In most parts of the world, the standard frame rate for true interlaced video is 25 frames per second or 50 fields per second. Because this is very close to 24 frames per second, film content is usually sped up slightly instead of duplicate fields or frames being created. That means neither variable frame rate encoding or duplicate frames are necessary. Simply deinterlace the interlaced portion of the video and you're done.